Hi, and welcome to the video tutorial um, on solar thermal pool heating and on how to use the utility that I made in Octave. Um, I've tried to do this video several times this morning. It hasn't turned out. <laughs> we'll see how this one goes. Um, eventually I'll get it right. The uh, If you... Uh, to understand this tutorial video, you should have seen some of the earlier ones, um, and hopefully, uh, hopefully they'll kind of make sense there, and uh, it'll kind of come together on this. I'm going to cover a lot of things that are covered in those, or I'm not going to cover things that were covered in the previous ones, um, but I'll, I'm just going to kind of breeze over them quickly. Um, so let's look at this though. This is the input spreadsheet that you should recognize from the previous videos. Um, so uh, we got the month of the year here. We have the day of the year. Um, and the day of the year is typically the middle of the month uh, is what I have it set to. Uh, we have our solar input parameters. Nothing new there. Should, should be review at this point. Um, and then our climate parameters, our other climate parameters anyway, wind speed, relative humidity, um, average monthly low temperature, average monthly high temperature, and then we have latitude, longitude, time zone correction, um, and this parameter is new, uh, location altitude. Um, the location altitude this location is northern Utah. Uh, location altitude comes into play uh, in a couple of places, uh, but mainly when it comes to calculating the evaporation. Uh, mass diffusivity increases with decreased pressure. In other words, things evaporate easier at uh, lower pressures. Um, and it also affects the pressures at uh, at different, uh, yeah, the, well, the pressure changes as far as, uh, it, it'll change saturation pressures and, and things like that when calculating the evaporation. Uh, so, I don't want to go into that too much more. It's kind of technically complicated and uh, don't see a need to. But uh, let's just move on here. Um, solar re reflectance and IR emissivity of your solar thermal plates um, or your solar thermal surfaces, whatever they may be. Um, your room temperature. Um, this is not going to come into play like it did before. Before we were looking at using solar thermal to even heat a living space or cool a living space if needed. Um, in this case, we're looking at this only in terms of if we build our solar thermal system over, you know, it's going to be heating a pool, um, but if we build it over a um, living space, like if it's built into it, the roof of a house, um, and the solar thermal modules say they have a significant uh, insulation rating, then they're going to there is going to be a benefit for that living space as far as insulation goes um, and so that's where this comes into play um, and so that's the only place this uh, this temperature will be used in the calculations um, and and I believe I went over that uh, previously um, the two files that you need to look up that show you your insulation savings um, your desired pool temperature. Um, as far as your desired pool temperature goes, I just did a quick Google search and it said 80 degrees is a comfortable temperature. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. Depending on your site, you may want higher than that, you may want lower than that. Um, but in any case, um, this becomes, uh, this is a parameter that you can decide for each location what you want it to be. Um, 
as far as these parameters, these are all the same as before. These deal with your solar thermal system, um, the U value, the volume flow rate, um, the module, uh, yeah, the uh, module R values, um, and the site R values. Um, and again, these come into play when we look at the insulation as far as. Uh, you know, if you put your solar thermal over living space, you're going to get an insulation benefit from it. And that can translate to a cost savings. Um, however, that's not our principal concern with pool heating, is it? We want a warm pool. So, um, we're going to, I'm going to focus mainly on the pool parameters, which are these three. Uh, the pool sides and bottom of the pool. Um, Typically, pools are made of concrete or cement of some kind. Um, after doing, again, a quick Google search, I found that uh, the pool sides and bottom um, are, you know, they can, uh, if, it, if we assume a gray, kind of a, a medium, middle-of-the-road gray colored concrete, um, we're going to have a solar reflectance around 40%. Um, and that becomes important when we look at the pool directly absorbing solar radiation. Um, the pool volume, I figure most people know the volume of their pool in gallons, but I, I wasn't sure on this. Um, if you need to calculate this, you know, you can just take measurements with a tape measure in feet and find out how many cubic feet the pool holds, more or less. And uh, once you know that, that'll translate to, uh, um, you can convert that to gallons. Uh, so I figure it's that's an okay unit to have there. And that should be easy enough to calculate. Um, pool surface area, again, take out the tape measure um, and, and just kind of measure the surface area of the pool. Um, it, admittedly, it does get more complicated when we look at, for the volume, when we look at things like having a shallow end and a deep end, it gets a little more tricky to calculate the volume. And, uh, or if you have curved surfaces of your, your pool, um, you know, if you have a circular pool or kind of an oval shaped pool or, or whatever, you know, when you start to add curves into it, it, it makes the even the surface area calculation more complicated. Um, so when you're dealing with those, uh, you know, you're just going to have to uh, do the difficult geometry and find those values. Um, but uh, for just a rectangular pool that's the same depth throughout, these should be really extremely easy to get. Um, again, it just gets complicated when you look at other geometries. Um, there are calculators on the internet that can help you with these. Um, if I have time, I'll look them up and include links to them uh, with this video. So, um, and then the uh, last bit has not changed at all. These are going to be exactly the same as for the other uh, solar thermal system that we did. Um, Nothing changes here when you're looking at a pool because these all deal with the, the solar thermal modules um, and how, how the setup is at a given site. Uh, so, um, yeah, those haven't changed at all. You don't have to worry about uh, adjusting the way that you, you figure out those parameters. Um, these parameters have a separate file, uh, in case you're wondering. Um, instead of saving them in ST unit, it'll be ST pool unit. Just you know, just in case, just so they don't, uh, because the parameters are different enough. Uh, I figured I should have a separate file for those, um, and so I did. Um, so let's go ahead and run it. And intentionally, I have, I'm just reviewing something I think I covered before, but I'm just going to show you what happens if you don't close your output file. Here's our 
our water heat or heat added from our solar thermal system to the pool. Um, so I'm going to run it. I'm going to show you what happens when it's not closed. You'll notice it goes fast. Um, so it's a very robust model. Not very expensive, computationally speaking. And blam. We get an error when it goes to right. That's because this is open. So just to review, we're going to close that. So all we have open is you know just our spreadsheet that we use to generate the, the input data files. Um, I'm going to run it. And you'll see it then. We won't get an error. Um, I do want to take a brief moment to talk about the files. Uh, as far as the files go, um, we do need to worry about, uh, well, I don't want to say worry, I kind of dumbed down the model on this one. Uh, it doesn't include all the fancy dynamics, system dynamics that it should. Um, if we want to be, if we want to have a perfect model. Um, instead of looking at, okay, this is the solar energy we're getting, and what temperature over the course of the day is the pool going to be as far as reacting to the solar input that we're adding. Um, instead of doing that, that would have been really complicated and computationally expensive. And I could see myself messing up the model somewhere and just not having the numbers work out. Um, so instead of doing all that, I decided to dumb things down and uh, and kind of just say, well, and you may have noticed with the inputs, for the input I just said, let's have a desired pool temperature and we'll just assume that the pool stays at this desired pool temperature the whole time. Um, day and night, you know. And so it doesn't have all the complicated system dynamics, like I said, thermally, that it would have if I calculated the temperature at every step of the day. However, um, it does uh, it does give us a, a ballpark figure. Um, and, and, you know, it's not unreasonable for us to pretend like, okay, we have a, an additional heater that's going to kick on um, just to maintain the pool at that temperature, um, you know, the rest of the day and to compensate for, for what the solar thermal system can do. So I, I figure this is kind of a conservative estimate um, uh, if we're looking at, you know, how our, our solar thermal system performs uh, with our pool. Um, so just kind of throwing that out. Um, okay, so our numbers are crunched. We have our figures just to review where we get the numbers from. Um, so again, heat insulation and cool insulation. If we have our modules built into a house or something and we're increasing the insulation rating of the house as a consequence. Um, okay, so these two are the files we were really interested in. Um, okay, these are comma delimited. Again, comma delimited. And we open them up and we get our data. And I already copied and pasted this data. Well, I'll go ahead and copy and paste it once again. Um, into, because our numbers will have changed slightly. Um, let's see our losses here. Uh oh. I'm going to have to go back. I did it wrong. Uh oh, shame on me. There we go. Okay, so I copied and pasted our information, and now we're going to look at them in a plot. Um, so here's what our plot says. 
Um, our losses uh, are high in the winter and low during the summer. We're not going to be wanting to run the pool during the winter anyway. The point of jumping into a pool is to cool off, right? So, um, yeah, during the winter, we don't care that we have a lot of pool losses and not very little. We have very little uh, solar input because um, we're probably not going to be using the pool during those months anyway. However, uh, we do care about the summer months. That's when we want to jump in our pool. That's when it's warm. And, uh, you know, that's when our solar thermal system actually performs the best. And so it's very convenient. Um, and so, um, and I'm just going to extend this just a little bit. Uh, negative one. Mm. Just so we can see some of the negatives, I'm going to explain kind of what this means. Um, so yeah, again, high losses, winter, low with losses during the summer. Um, and these are our two panels. These represent the heat input coming from our two panels. Um, and so we want to look at the difference between these. We want to say this panel plus the energy from this panel minus the energy from, yeah, minus the energy that the pool's losing gives us a net energy of our pool. And uh, for the months that our net energy is positive, basically that means day to day, um, if we heat up our pool, um, we heat up our pool during the day with the energy from our solar thermal system, um, we are going to be able to, uh, we're going to be able to entirely heat our pool just off of solar energy. Um, and again, remember this is northern Utah, so during the month of July and August, we can 100% heat our pool with just solar energy. Um, as far as the month of June goes, um, we're not quite there. Um, we would need just a tiny bit of supplemental heating um, from a, you know some outside, some electric pool heater or whatever, or maybe a gas heater um, to maintain our pool at a given temperature. Um, so, so for the months, uh, and if you look at the month of June, it's very close to being at zero, basically, which is where you'd break even, um, and you wouldn't need uh, an additional heater. So that's kind of what that means. Um, so you may be asking a couple of questions at this point. Um, so what about the month of May and the month of I don't know, September. Maybe you want to swim in your pool during those months, too. Um, that's fine. Um, you can swim in your pool during those months. And your solar... Uh, you can use solar heat to heat your pool during those months. You will have a savings uh, from your solar heater. All it means is we're going to need more supplemental heat during those months. Um, because our solar heat is just, it's low enough that uh, we just can't quite offset as well the losses. Um, so that's all that means. Uh, we still get savings from our solar heating system. Um, we just need to offset the difference with a standard pool heater. Um, if we want to maintain it at those temperatures. It's possible, you know, to maintain it at lower temperature um, for those months with just the solar uh, heating system. Um, but if you want to keep it at a comfortable temperature, you're probably going to need to supplement it there. Um, so, and, it, and that applies also for the month of, particularly for the month of June, you know, maybe you'll just want, maybe you'll just have to have your solar thermal, uh, maybe you'll just have to have your pool at a lower temperature 
so that it can be heated entirely by solar thermal energy. Um, that's all that. Basically, that's all it boils down to there. Um, so, yeah. Um, I think that covers pretty much everything in the tutorial. Um, again, my model is a little bit simple, a little bit dumbed down, but I think it does give you still an effective idea of, of cost savings um, that you'll get from your solar thermal system when it comes to keeping your uh, pool at a given temperature. So, um, and it's a conservative model, so you it will probably even perform a little bit better than, than what uh, this is saying. Um, so I will post this uh, utility to the interwebs as soon as uh, I'm going to get upload the video and upload the new utility. And uh, hopefully you guys will get some use out of it out there, uh, all you solar thermal guys. So uh, good luck with that, and uh, I hope you uh, got something out of this video.